What's up? I'm Noelle at Noelle's Notions, and this is Fame by the Flame with Work Dirty. Work Dirty, done, baby. We in this thing, huh? All right, so Work Dirty, let's get down to the dirt, and I want to go back to about you and how you became to be the man that you are today in the music scene. So what brought you, you know, into the hip-hop world? Uh, get away from the streets. Like, typical okay. story, like everybody else. Watching my, you know, older cousin do it, and... You know, not seeing a whole lot of options and, mm -hmm. and you know, things, a lot of things going on. I say probably like, you know, I've always been rapping though. Like, I would, like, you know, we used to do freestyle contests at school and stuff like that. I went to Vallejo High. And um, actually, I went to Vallejo High with Willie Joe and Clyde Carson. They was a little, that was actually was older than me. Clyde's older than me, but you know, we all went to Vallejo High together. A couple other rappers went there too. I can't remember. Uh, CC Sebastian went there, he played baseball. That school had a lot of stars, a lot of people come about that thing. But uh, yeah, so we used to have these freestyle contests. So I never really took, rap too serious and I try to go to art school I try to go the right way about doing things got caught up in the streets doing you know things yeah. knuckleheads do and then like you know my cousins was rapping and stuff like that and my uh, of course everybody know 40 and Beeland and my cousins they was doing their thing but my uh, my other cousins that was a little bit older than me like a hot who I was in a group with in the DBs uh, Freeze who was in Capo Click they had a group called Down and Dirty and they actually got a record deal with a uh, record independent label named Make a West Okay. I forgot how they distributed it. So I used to run around behind them when I was like 15, 14. They were on the radio. They was doing their thing. And, you know, and rap just became, started becoming more realer. Mm -hmm. I was actually seeing them actually making money, putting out projects, seeing their posters around the city. You know, I was I was their, uh, you know, they underling. I was their little goons. So to speak. <laughs> you know, I was a bunch of them guys. You know yeah. I mean? The first time I ever got in the real studio was with uh, High Freeze and my cousin Ezaz. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so... Then it got more serious. Then, you know, I tried to go out and try to go to school and do different things. But, you know, I was grew up in foster homes and shit like that. Didn't really have no foundation. So I didn't really have nowhere to kind of lay my hat at, like, mm -hmm. 18, 17, 18 when I got out of high school. So, you know, I just was, you know, I was actually homeless when I was, like, 17, 18. Oh, wow. Yeah, just doing whatever. I had to pillow to post, sleeping with homies, partners houses. So I came up on a little broad or whatever, you know. You know, you know how that go. Came up on a little batch and, Stay with the batch, you feel me? That's when I came to Sacramento for a minute and whatnot. And, uh, you know, and then just doing the little mixtape thing with freezing hot. I think a little situation fell apart with their deal. And then uh, eventually, my cousin Muzzy from the Mossy, which is 40's um, younger brother, seen us. Mm -hmm. Get serious, going hard on the mixtape scene. We were selling CDs out the trunk of our car, like, posting for the Walmart. <laughs> Niggas don't know, I was really paying my rent like that for yeah. a long time, but, like, real talk of a year. Yeah, I like, remember when CDs were actually the real deal, right? Listen, for everyone streaming music. We used to, it was, this, this is how serious it was. Like, we was trapping, right? We wasn't, we wasn't trapping heavy. Like, we was, you know, $5 rock, $10 rock. Niggas at the time, you feel me? I was, like, 18, 19, 18. And, uh... And uh, when we was pressing our CDs, we had like a fucking, we had one burner, external burner, hooking up to this fucking laptop. And uh, the laptop was a piece of shit. We used to have to keep the charger to plug it in the car. And we was literally burning like a hundred some CDs a day on that thing. We'd get them right on them. I don't name one of them. Go stand in front of Walmart from Sacramento to Oakland, San Francisco, San Jose, Fairfield, Vallejo. Stand up, and then when the Walmart kick us out, we go stand in front of the liquor store that's popping. Then we go there, we go stand in the hood. At the hood liquor store, was like, you know what I mean? That's how we really got our shit buzzing. Yeah. It's rapping over the niggas' beats back then when you could do that shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. do you think that a lot of your influences were not only, like, your friends and your family, but did you have any other influences, like, big-time names that, like, you looked up to that you modeled, like, your sound after? Or was it mostly just you created your own through what you're talking about, like, through, like, the streets, like, collaborating with, um, you know, E-40 and other, like... People who are close think, to you. I think over time my sound has definitely graduated a lot. Okay. There's a lot of influences as far as learning styles of music and writing styles, mm -hmm. like learning melodic things and melodies and how to like hold your words and be animated with your words. Uh, I, I can't really name these people because it's, it's really too many to name. But um, as far as rapping style directly, it wasn't it wasn't a lot of direct influence. But uh, like just seeing being around forty, seeing the extra hard work, like the man's almost fifty years old, he still works like he's twenty, like he broke. He's, mm -hmm. Stay at four or five in the morning, record music, put out a ton of music. I mean, just watching different things. I, I was exposed to a lot of things yeah. through him. Being in Atlanta a lot around Lil John and just different people like that. You know what I'm saying? Seeing seeing hit records be made, give you a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, the hustle was kind of like what pushed you, like seeing others kind of making moves and kind of tapping into that and being like, hey, I can do that and I can like create my own sound. Well, so, definitely. how did you, I mean, how did you make your own sound away from the people that you, you know, started with? Like, what kind of made you the artist that you are, like, if you could sum that up. 
Well, I, I would say the birth, the birth of my rap shit was the Ivy movement. Like I would say, like I was six or seven mm-hmm. era. We came in with that, with that sound. Even though I was more of an extremely serious rapper, but we came in during the hyphen movement. We had a big record called Stewie. So that was almost like our coin sound, so to speak. Okay. Like Sick Woody had a new wave. You know, everybody knows Sick Woody from the nineties. Yeah. And then like that mid two thousand range, a whole new wave came with Turf Talk, Numb, mm-hmm. the DBs, uh, Droopy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The B Slim, and it was a whole like new sound for Sick Woody, and we was we was on the forefront of that sound. Just like even now, like you got the you know you got the new wave with the like the net fair O and B P Z and sick with it and stuff like that. So during those six era, we was like in the forefront on the on the, on the, on the front line with that sound. So that was a sound thing, but I know in music you have to evolve in, in yeah. order to maintain people's attention. So that was our sound names, heavy, hard hitting eight oh eight beats, talking about the lifestyle, the hyphy shit, you know what I mean? it's turned up. They call it turned up now, I guess whatever you wanna say, but yeah. We had we had you know, we had dreads. We were driving yeah, around. Yeah, right? Yeah, we were driving around in foreign cars, two tone on foes, speakers everywhere, TVs everywhere, bouncing out, retarded shit. You feel me? Just that was the life, so the music reflected the lifestyle. Yeah. So. But since then, since I've gotten older, more mature, I got two kids. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm making more legit money than I was then. You know what I mean? A lot of different things going on. So my flow has graduated with. My lifestyle. You know yeah. I mean? Well, I was gonna say, yeah. So, how is that? How has your flow changed? I mean, you have a notorious workout right now, um, and so go what, get it. Yes, go, go get, get it, fans. Go get it. Tune in, turn on. And so, how did that? I mean, obviously, like that's your newest, right? So that's like the best representation of what you're rolling on now. How has that sound changed from like whatever? Like, let's say your first thing that you put out. Extremely. Like my flow, my wordplay is, is, man, like ten times better than what it was. My ear for picking beats is a million times better than what it was. Um, just my hooks, my writing ability is way better. It's just a different flow. It's just more of a graduated flow. It's still turned up and managed. It's still going to give you the hearts of the streets. But, you know, I might talk about bouncing out with that 30 stick, but I might tell you why I did it, and I might speak about the consequences okay. of what can happen to you also if you do that. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just talking the dumb shit, I got the dumb shit, but also being grown, so I've seen both sides of the fence, so I'm going to give you all of it. Yeah. Um, but my sound... Like, I've added a lot of... I've always... This funny thing is, like, my music recently, a lot of people listening, probably been listening lately, this is, like, new videos, like, trying to make a way or something different. They might have a lot of melodic, singing type of stuff. I've actually been doing that since I was, like, 15. But it was funny because it kind of wasn't cool to do that shit yeah. back in the day, so I had turned it all the way off. Mm-hmm. Especially when 06 hit and the hyphy shit, I mean... Wasn't nobody doing nothing. Yeah, no one's melodic wanting to hear you sing all. on the record. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't super singing, but it was like kind of melodic. Like if you go listen, like, well, you probably I don't know if you can find that shit, but if you go listen <laughs> to some real old shit like Down and Dirty or Hot uh, had an album called Hot to Death and, and um I was like melodic on there. Like I remember it's funny because the mugs was telling me, man, he's always be like, do that shit, bro, do that. And I was like, hell no, I ain't doing that shit. Like I don't I didn't want to do that shit. I think that shit was cool to do. Like it's super cool to do now, so yeah, right. It's like uh, training. So you you were ahead of the times. I, I was doing that even shit when I was it. fifteen, bro. I'm not even joking. Like, really, go tap in and listen. I was fifteen years old doing the melodic shit. In so real what's life. like? Okay, so for those fans who you know are just tuning in, right? And for those fans that want to relive all your old stuff and have stuck around with you, what is a really good song from like way back in the day that you want people to like dig deep and go listen to? Uh, well, of course, the first people anybody that's been following us or following Sick with the Movement mm-hmm. since the movement. Everybody know that we the DBs, me and Hot, we had the Stewie record. It was super mega huge just before some social media. We was popping on MySpace. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> and we had we had the radio on Smash everywhere yeah. from LA to here to Bay, SAC, 103 everywhere, 106 came here. You know what I'm saying? So that's the first one. But uh, I would say really go listen to them Waterworld mixtapes by the DBs. You can find them shits. They're still out there. They called the Water World, bro. Them things was crazy. <laughs> the, the flows and shit was nuts. Like we was so hot at the time, bro. We used to get like, um, we used to do like we had knock a mixtape out in one day, like do fifteen songs. I remember it was at one point, cause it's crazy because you know everybody follow trends. I don't. It's for this generation. I don't know what they doing, but we was about getting money eighteen years ago, right? So all the rappers, the real niggas that was getting money at the time, we used to be like. I ain't gonna say what we was doing to get money. Everybody know, but we used to all be together in like San Jose at the studio. I remember like us, Turf Talk, uh, everybody, bro. Like uh, 
my niggas hood stars, like for everybody, like everybody used to be, we used to be shooting dice, nigga, for thousands of dollars and shit in the studio. I forgot the name of the studio. And uh, I heard a boy, DJ Rock 2K, he used to DJ, he don't DJ no more. But uh, Nick's Take Mob, shout out them boys, them was my dudes. And they, uh, he was like, bro, he pulled up with some bread, like, bro, let's knock a mixtape out. We knocked that shit out one day, me and I had 15 songs. We got every rapper in the bay right here in the studio. All right, come on, do a verse for me, my nigga. Jump on this, boo, 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 boo. Like, it used to be like that, like, we was just living. Yeah. That was the day. Niggas was young niggas, 19, 20 years old, though, you feel me? Having it, though, having stupid bread. I remember we used to, um, bro, we had so many foreign cars, bro. We pulled up to the studio, 40 wouldn't even let us park at the studio because our studio was in the suburbs mm -hmm. in San Ramon, you know what I'm saying? So, we had like 740 BMWs and shit at the time. And we paid the motherfuckers two tones. We put crazy colored rims on them. Niggas was having logo paint, Kellogg, <laughs> Kellogg colored paint and shit. T Tony the Tiger paint and shit on your car and shit. He'd be like, bro, don't not pull them shits up here. <laughs> yeah. The studio was in a, in a business uh, complex with all clear people and, you know, real estate people and investment bankers and shit. And like, you can't pull up here in that shit. <laughs> so I used to be like, so we just had to like park at this Safeway off the 680 and get a fucking uh, a cab or a rental car or something to go to the studio. To go, yeah. yeah Before crazy. Uber, right? Yeah. Before all that right just here. Ignorant shit. Up. You feel me? Just ignorant <laughs> shit. Ignorant shit. Ignorant shit, bro. Well, Good well I mean, you gotta drop bands if you got them, right? I'm definitely. We were just some, we, we were some young niggas having a, having a whole lot of money, man. We was really having a lot. Like, a lot of niggas rapping about it, but a lot of niggas ain't really had it, though. Like, even now, like, it's comedy. Like, it's funny to me. Like, a lot of niggas, like, my peers. You know what I'm saying? I would say I would say people of my peers would be like the Jay Stalins and the Filthy Riches and the and the Mr. Fabs and all them mm -hmm. like like La Rue, like ask any nigga, like they know, nigga, we was having it, nigga. On my mama, 19, 20 years old, having it. On God, pulling up in shit, like spaceships, nigga. We was going pulling up in spaceships, bro. My mama for anybody was having it. In real fucking life though. Like it's it's verified, confirmed. From Sacramento to the Bay, everywhere. Niggas know, bro. On, on God, fuck the rap shit. You know what I mean? Niggas get hot with this rap shit, but niggas know niggas was having chicken, though, at 19, 20, though. Really having hundreds of thousands of dollars in real life. Well, you know, times have changed, but something that hasn't changed is obviously, like, your talent and the music that you're putting out has grown, just like you said, over time with, you know, you becoming an adult and the things that you're now experiencing. Um, and so for now off the new project that you have, what is the song that you really want fans to vibe with or one that kind of sums up, like, what you're talking about, like, your new style, your new sound? It's so many good records on there. Um, oh, if y'all go to YouTube, check out this video mm -hmm. called uh, Something Different. It's the one that's airing on BET Jams right now. Like, Yeah, and it, I want to talk a little bit more about that, too. I was, I was spitting on that thing, and I put the melodic shit in there. It's just a super dope record. Like, um, It's so many good ones. Uh, Trying to Make a Ray remix. The original Trying to Make a Ray was dope. I had a bunch of underground, non-named uh, artists from Vallejo from my city. And the original songs on the mixtape I put out on Christmas. And the song just was popping off on Spotify and Apple Music and Pandora. So I ended up doing a remix. I got the remix from Mr. Fab and Be The Weedy. That's a super dope record. Super, super dope. Um, out the Mud, me and D-Lo is crazy. So uh, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, you being on BETI. But I want to talk about, like, how, like that's just amazing. Like, coming from, you know, humble beginnings to now, like, you are where you at today. Like, you did, you got money in your pocket. You're collaborating with a lot of people. You are um, have a name for yourself. How did that feel, you know, now being on BET? You said you had a lot of DMs rolling through. Uh, <laughs> we ain't talking about them DMs. Let them DMs <laughs> DMs get me in trouble. But, um, uh, yeah, just working. Like, you can do, like... This independent shit is crazy. It's like, I, I see so many artists that never get anywhere. They be hella talented, too. Mm -hmm. and it's like, but they don't understand this business is really a business. It's 90% business. Yep. And, you know, it's really only like 10% music. The reason you know that because you see a lot of shitty people winning. Yeah. It's just, they got their business together. You know, they connected with the right people. They knocked on the right door. The right door opened for them. However the powers may be in God allowed. You know, that's how it go. It ain't up for us to, you know, question it. You know what I'm saying? God got a plan for everybody. So, you know, that's just how it go. But, um, yeah, I've been, you know, I've been grinding a long time, spending my own bread, doing different things. But it's all really all about the right connections, spending your money in the right places, getting to the right people, opening the right doors, and putting your, your money in the right people's hands. And um, that's just really what it's about. Yeah. You know? You well, know. I mean, it seems like you've been, uh, have a good hand, right? Not only yeah. um, are you, universe is on your side, but you're putting in uh, work and it's paying off. And you actually have an interview with iHeart uh, coming up, right? Yeah, I got an iHeart radio And interview possibly rocking the red carpet, right? Up hopefully, October 6th, or... hopefully that work out. Right? BT, you need a date? <laughs> <laughs> I 
got you. I got you. <laughs> so, you know, all this stuff is going to... Oh, that's that on camera. <laughs> All this stuff oh, is coming into fruition, and you have a lot of new stuff coming out, right? So you're, like, hitting all these uh, major media performances, right? And people monitoring you. Now you also have all these new videos coming out, and you have Karma, right, that's going to mm. be coming out soon. So you want to yeah. tell us a little bit, maybe a sneak peek into, like, what that video is going to look like? Um, I'm just speaking on street activity, how things get turned around on you when you're being a hater, you're being shysty. Okay. And, you know... And karma come back around. Yeah, full I always circle. say this. I say car- karma come back around like a circus. You know, the circus come back yeah. every year. Come back. So mm-hmm. that's my thing. People always say come around full circle. I like to say like a circus. That's my thing. Video shot by my dude Cobra Cuts. You know All what right, shout out. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. working with my boy J Sim. J Sim did a ton of videos for me. Working you know, for a long time. Too. He's super dope. A lot of people know about him in Northern California. Um, yeah, we got a lot of videos. Just tag me to my YouTube channel, man. Just search yeah. work dirty, spelled regular, the way it says work dirty. <laughs> Uh, well, and I was going to say, you know, on top of the video and on top of the new stuff that you have coming out in December, you also have maybe some collaborations, some big ones in the works, right? Yeah, we're working on some. I was talking to Droopy, and we're working on something. I can't huh? say, but we're trying to make right. something happen. Cool. No, bad, bad talk, man. Yeah. Well, but that bad, just means that fans talk. are going to have to keep a close eye on you, right? Watch us coming yeah, through what you The next out. project I want to drop, I want to I reach out. Like, I don't want to, uh, nothing against none of my Northern California people. There's a lot of super talented people here that I admire and look up to. We have business mm-hmm. tactics and talent. But I want to reach out of here a little bit and just give my fans something else, something yeah. left field that they wouldn't expect. Yeah. A feature that they wouldn't expect. Somebody I ain't never collaborated with over these, you know, these 10 years or so, whatever. So I've been trying to do this, I guess. So I just want to go out a little bit because they just expect it. Like I can, I can reach yeah. anybody here in the Bay. I've done music with almost all the big ones, or at least somebody in a camp. And you know, I got a relationship, pretty much relationship with everybody. Not so much all the youngsters, but you know, a few of them or whatever. But I want to reach out and do something different with somebody from a different region. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm working on something. I got idea in my mind and yeah yeah it's it's gears are turning right yeah. so she's gonna yeah. go down um well you have been in the music industry for so long and like you said you were kind of ahead of the times with um your melodic uh singing kind of vibe to some of your sound so with that insight where do you see the music especially like the hip-hop scene going like transitioning let's say like the next five years and you know it's crazy at one point in time it was like dang no hard hip no hardcore hip-hop is gonna pop no more, and then you see certain records drop, and you be like, okay, it's good. We, mm-hmm. and I don't know, it's all over the place, man. There's so many different things going on right now. I was just like, you know, I'm I'm an internet junkie. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm DJ academics every day. Who said what to who? Yeah. What Takashi Six Nine said to somebody else today? Machine Gun Kelly, Eminem, and Jeezy. Shout out Jeezy, my that's my dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, he fuck with sick with it tough. Um, actually, I got a story about him too. But, um. Yeah, they all going at each other. Well, not really him and Eminem, but Machine Gun Kelly. And, uh, yeah. You know, but anyway, by Jeezy. He, I like him. He's good dude. Yeah, I was going to say, you got any uh, backstage wild stories? Oh, no. We, just, we, was all, we, was all, we all just kind of hang. He, he, he fuck with 40 tough. I only mm-hmm. met him a couple times in my personal self. But one story I had on him was actually, it wasn't really involving me. Somebody had called me one day and said he was playing my, one of my old records on Snapchat. And then, you know, once my cousin Hot came across him in Vegas, he was just like, yeah, I was a fan of y'all's, man. I was listening to y'all in high school and shit like that. I thought it was hella dope. And, and yeah. my boy RJ, 40 manager, told me the same thing, too. So that was yeah. dope. You know what I mean? Just even when people get big, it's like you still came from somewhere. Your yeah. friends came from somewhere. Well, I was going to say, you know, you shout out to everyone with Sick With It Records and yeah. just, like, everyone who affiliates. Because, like you said, it's kind of, you start with friends and family, and that's really, like, the and, basis yeah, of... Yeah, and, 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 and it's also in Northern California. Like, if you, yeah. you are a rapper now from here... And, you know, you're a certain age group. You cannot say you didn't grow up on the shit we was dropping. Like, yeah. you, you wasn't alive in the hyphy movement and didn't hear us. You And you could not have been listening to any Bay Area, Northern California music and not been affected by the shit that we was dropping. Sick with the records. Like, we was killing shit. We had the radio on Smash. You know what I'm saying? That's like me saying I wasn't affected by Messi Marv. I wasn't affected by... Uh, uh, Keith the Sneaker. I wasn't affected by Mac Dre. I'd be lying. Like yeah. you feel me? I'm listening to all that I, down to Cutthroat Committee. I even heard some of their stuff, even though you know, <laughs> at one point you know, being from the side of town, we're supposed to be listening to that. But yeah. you know, what I'm saying everything. Like I heard everything. I was I heard Hollow Tip. I heard Sibo. I heard uh, T Nutty. I, I was I listened. My ears was open. To everything as a fan, as a youngster. So I think when people give it up like that, that'd be heck of dope. Like to me, like even if you're hella big and you on right now. Just to give it up, about, you know, influences is super dope. Like, yeah. I was, I was just listening to Sebo a whole lot. Like, I remember my cousins brought the shit home, and I was like, what the fuck is this? 
and he was just crazy. Like, this thing is nuts. You feel me? Like, he was on some other shit, and it was just dope. I remember listening to my casket drop. I remember listening to Mace. I remember listening to, like, everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just a fan of music first. And I just, I like that when artists does, um, like, give it up, pay homage to, yeah. um, to people. Yeah, well, I mean, it just kind of shows, like, the realness of the artist and the fact that, like, the Bay Wave, like, rolled over everyone. Like, it, it kind of touched everyone in its own way and affected now all these new artists who are coming out or maybe even artists who've been in the game but now are actually, like, blowing up and are in the scene. Like, their influence is now, like, who they are and that all right. that is, like, everyone tapped into that. Everyone had a part of that. And I think that's so cool, the connectivity that the music scene had, especially in NorCal. Like, we've evolved out here. <laughs> I was one person I wanted to say. Also. Yeah. I listened to I used to listen to a lot of Yef Mouth too, man. I remember, man, man. I remember he had it was crazy, baby. Man. I think people don't give him enough credit for his lyrical ability. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He might not be as hot as he was now and then, but he maintained himself when he stayed uh, fairly relevant. He said, "You always got to give people." I see Mr. Fab do an interview on uh, the Breakfast Club yesterday. He said, "Give people their roses while they lie." So I'm just giving dudes their roses. You know what I mean? He's super dope, super talented. Yep. This motherfucking we used to really sit back and listen to that shit. I remember on Mariposa, me and my cousins right by the view, and just sitting there listening to Yuck, listening to Bo, listening to all that shit. That shit crazy. Even for them dudes watching Bo on Instagram. I was speaking on them because just people that came before me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And just watching them on Instagram now, and they still doing shows, they still spitting, they still, you know, fairly relevant or whatever, and things like that. So I think it's dope. You know what I'm saying? The people I grew up on. Yeah. Of course, I grew up on the E40s and all that. It would be easy for me to give them a shout out. People see me with them and all the time. They know it's my cousin. But yeah, it's, it's, it's those it, other people that, that have that. I'm just talking about, yeah, yeah, exactly. The other people that uh, had um, influence on me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Keek, I always give him, every time I see him, you know I mean, I give him his roses. He's super dope. And, and San Quinn, I was watching a crazy interview on San Quinn. That nigga's nuts. <laughs> I was interviewing today. <laughs> That's a whole nother story, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, he he always showed, and, and these dudes showed me so much love and respect yeah. when I see them. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, damn, like you know what I mean? I remember when it was my dream just to be around a Sibo or a Yuck Mouth or a Keek the Sneaker or San Quinn, and I see these dudes. Maybe not as Bo as much. I don't really you know him like that, but these other dudes, when I see them, they just give me a, a humble embrace. Like, yeah. they respect what I do. They just so cool, and you know, it's just. Well, it's just like, again, they're just real people. Like, they're Mm. real people who the music that they're putting out there is just a piece of them that, you know, you connected with. And I think that's the beautiful thing of, like, those friendships and those admiration and those influencers that are in your life that you're giving these roses to, you know? It's like, hey, I see you. Like, I see you working. I see you doing your thing. And I respect you and appreciate you. Uh-huh. But I want to bring it back to you a little bit. Um, what is the feeling, you know, you've performed so many shows. And, again, you have your tour coming up in um, December. Um what are you, like, what's the feeling that you get when you go on stage? Like, do it, like is it still the same as, like, day one? Like, oh, it's more exciting now than oh, ever. okay. It's more exciting now than ever because even, like, for example, like, when you're an artist and you go into a, a spot and people say, I like the people who never heard of me. It's always dope to get the fans. Like, a certain, it's crazy because certain faces I see everywhere. Like, hey, you was just in Reno. You're like, you're traveling with you're me. You're in the stock <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But the fan yeah. that never heard of you... Or like, you know, say you might be a fan and you come out, you ain't gonna come by yourself, so you bring your homegirl from work. Yeah, yeah. Or you bring your brother or your boyfriend or, or you know, a couple of people with you and they like, I don't want no fucking show who the fuck is you who work there. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Who the fuck is that? And then they come and they're just wild by the music. Mm-hmm. Or they hear me perform a song, maybe a song I did on the forty album that they already loved already. And they was like, That's him? Oh yeah. shit. Get the fuck out of here, like or something like that, like and that shit be dope as fuck to me. Just like and making then, new fans as you go. And then next thing you know, I see them. Pff, I, I I got a good memory. I see them pop up on the Instagram. Yeah. Then I see the YouTube uh, page follow, mm-hmm. and then next thing you know, they just they in like you know they now now they the new face I see everywhere. Yeah. And they got four or five people with them. And yeah. Them, right. And now I got another one. You know what I'm saying? It just it should be dope. So going to the root of why you still do music after all these years, like why you still keep hustling, like. What is it like? What keeps you? It's not. It's not. It's not really money. I, because I'm a hustler. I, I can make money either way. I can sell real estate. I can sell cars. I can sell popsicle sticks. I've sold women. I mean, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Allegedly. I sell popsicle sticks. But um, nah. It's just the love for music. I love. Yeah. It. Like I love to create. I love to hear people reaction. I love to show my let my friends hear a record for them to be like, whoa, okay, that's it. Like you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying. And then I'm gonna see how this will get out when I put it out. When we put it out for the world to hear, or you know, or my fans to hear, or for. You know, my region here or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's why. Okay. 
And then I guess I have a final question for you. You know, since you've had a lot of people who've influenced you, and I'm sure that you're a big influence to a lot of other uh, new coming artists, what advice do you have um, for those artists that maybe are either just starting out or are starting to put in work and are really trying to get to where you are? Stop taking pictures of girls on your Instagram. Um, stay humble, pay homage, work your ass off, don't post guns on your Instagram. Don't post drugs on your Instagram. And be careful on Instagram. Yeah, just basically uh, just yeah. overall, just don't do dumb shit on Instagram. Yeah, don't much, do right? dumb shit, period. A lot of dumb shit fuck people up before they can even get a chance to really get where they need to be. I see it happen uh, every day. Social media is crazy. Yeah, uh, it is. It's, it's, it's a whole new uh, monster compared, you know, back yeah. to like 90s or even like when we were growing up, you know. It didn't even, even the, have that even stuff. Just, it's crazy because the, the world flips so fast. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, being technology is so fast that it'll make you seem older. Like technology so fast that I'm literally talking about things five, six, seven years ago, but it make it seem like it was like light years ago. Yeah, like, like, like with we're talking space. about the Tupac yeah. era or something. But really, <laughs> I'm speaking on things. I'm, t- I'm talking about a lot of shit. Just 08, 2010, 2011, 2012, yeah, and 2018. It's five, six, seven, eight years ago. You know, it's a long time to a motherfucker that's 17. He was only 10 or 11 back then, but. It wasn't really that long ago, but technology is so crazy. Like you know, we didn't have this. People really wasn't even using YouTube until like oh six. Yeah, yeah. And they and, and it wasn't really using it then. Yeah. That's just when it was around. Yeah. Um, Instagram ain't even that old. You know what I'm saying? What is it? Five years old? If that. Yeah. You know well, saying? I mean, like with your Instagram, I see you posting all stuff, and you're very open, like with you know your music videos, like pictures of your life, things like that. And I feel like you really try to connect with your fans. What's one thing that you really want your fans to know about you that maybe you don't post on your Instagram? Maybe something more personal. I don't to post. You. Yeah, maybe just something more personal to, um, you know, like what, like I said, like why I you post do a lot of shit. Uh, what I don't post, I don't know. Uh, I, that, I, that I'm really humble, but I really feel like I'm like. Uh, musically better than a lot of people around. Mm-hmm. I just don't speak on that a lot because I'll never like to sound like a cocky asshole. Cause, <laughs> no, really, because I listen to a yeah. lot of stuff that come out and I'm like, God, who the fuck was around you? Like, who let you put that shit out? Yeah. Like, y'all gonna spend y'all money on that? Like, advertising that? But, you know, it's whatever. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, God has his way of just doing things. You know, he said in the Bible, the first to be last and the last to be first. I really just want everybody to hear what I'm saying. It's not even about the money. I just want to hear it. I want yeah. them to hear it. Like, I feel like I just produce and, and uh, deliver this better quality of music than a lot of people. Well, you definitely have um, a grand legacy that you're leaving, I think, for your friends, your family, and for all your fans. So I think you're in good looks, right? And you, mm-hmm. ain't, you ain't messing up on your Instagram. Your Instagram's nah, clean. Nah, <laughs> we, I'm, just from a, I'm just cut from a different cloth. Like, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't do that. Like, the, the era I came from, we don't even, we don't, it was hard for me to even show money on Instagram. Like, I, like I work with publicists and they're like, you got to show a little more. The kids want to see it. The youngsters mm-hmm. want to see you. Car there. I'm like, all right, I, we didn't do that. Like, yeah. that was the era we came from. Like, I came from the D boy era, D boy mentality. We don't show nothing, like, yeah, because either somebody trying to take it or yeah. trying to come get you for how you got it. Yeah. So, that's just the you know, what I mean, that's just you know, what we grew up in. So, adapting some of this new shit, but still keeping my old school shit that I learned, yeah, you know, what I mean, still on the forefront, too. So, well, again, I was gonna say, you're definitely keeping up with the times, and if anything, you're leading the pack a little bit. So, I really appreciate you uh, for being on Fame by the Flame. I got to learn a lot about you. That's all. That's what's up. <laughs> and I want to shout this fat fly nigga movement yeah. shit, man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'll be on this shit heavy. It's a hashtag. You probably don't know about it, but it's really lit. I got it really lit. All the big niggas be trying to follow my fashion, man. You know how I move and shit. You know what I'm saying? This fat fly nigga shit is very real. You know what I mean? I really pride myself on being a fly ass big nigga, though. That's really my Yeah, thing. you looking good. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> so the winter coming, summer's over. All the ladies, you know what I mean? Go get you a big nigga. You feel me? You can cuddle up to it, get warm with it. You feel me? Skinny niggas, y'all just expired yesterday. Yeah, that was summer, you know right? That was summer, summer 2K18. <laughs> <laughs> I think going to be like, nigga, whatever. I'm good year-round, nigga. You got a bitch a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, we're dirty. I really appreciate you. You're a great guy, and I'm so Thank glad you. that I got to have you on Fame by the Flame. I appreciate yes, you, too. Yes, yes. Got your dress popping in. Oh, you good to go. So Legs off perfectly shaped. <laughs> you feel me? You got it rocking. Oh, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. Um, and shout out, you know, on the labs, Jay. He always keeps it rocking, always up in the studio. So, That's sporting tough. artists and stuff in the 916. Um, well, fans, until next time, I'm Noelle at Noelle's Notions, and this is Fame by the Flame with Work Dirty. You know that.